Hello, welcome to your monthly class. This month's On The Reformer is all about the swan. So the swan comes in many different forms, but it really does find its way in so many exercises, even ones that you might not think about. And so I thought it would be really fun for us today to see where we can find all of our swanness, right? So um, if you don't do big extension movements, please don't worry. Um, You can continue to do your like a smaller version of an extension movement. So a swan prep the whole time if you want. We are going to do a swan prep together. That way, whenever we do bigger swans, you can always go back to that one. You can also get on your mat and do it. Okay, so just be mindful. And then also know that we only do a few of everything. So if it's a really big movement, it's going to be over pretty quickly. You can just keep doing what you did before that. So we'll start with one spring and lying on your back for your footwork. So here we go. Before you start moving, place the balls of your feet on the foot bar heels together and just notice what's taking up space on your mat, right? What's, what's not touching versus what is touching. Keep all of your natural curves, but if for whatever reason you have a natural curve that pops your ribs out like a chicken at the grocery store, can you breathe into your low ribs and take up space and then go ahead and press that. And remember you're on one spring, so don't go crazy. And the reason for this is, is that I really need you to learn how to reach through your legs without having a ton of spring because in your swan, you have to reach through your legs sometimes without any feedback whatsoever. So use this and take note of which leg reaches more than the other. And also what's happening in your pelvis. If you want, you can even put your fingertips on your pubic bone and the heel of your hands on your hip bones and then make sure that as you come in you're not tucking you're also not tilting the other way and then come all the way in and come onto your arches and press out and pull in and you can keep your hands there you could remove them if you've learned what your pelvis does and what i like about parallel on the arches is it's really similar to how your legs are going to be if you're doing swan on the mat you'll actually spin your inner thighs up, right? Or if you're doing pulling straps, which is a version of swan, right? So you feel getting comfortable squeezing those inner thighs and outer hips and reaching to those legs in parallel is key. And then hook your feet up and come onto your arches and push out and in and just be aware of which leg is not reaching as much as the other one. That's all information. My left one is like, are you kidding? <laughs> not today. Every day is different. So hopefully you you have a different opportunity this month as you repeat this class to see how much you improve. What gets more connected along the way versus what maybe disconnects. And then come all the way in and come onto the balls of your feet and press out, lower the heels and lift the heels. And remember, it's not about the weight of the springs. If you're like, oh, I don't have this stretch because it's only one spring. It's not about the stretch. It's about working your legs from your waist and hugging your outer hips in last three and two and one come all the way in take a moment to make sure that the balls of the feet are where you want them press out stay out there with straight legs lift your head and chest up pump your arms vigorously by your side so where your toes are and laying with your eyes right this if we flip it around and take this flexion and do the exact reverse extension it would be an amazing swan to rock and roll so opening up the upper back stretching it through this flexion reaching those legs long and finding your hamstrings inner thighs and outer hips all very important so that when we flip you against gravity you have the strength to support this reverse curve in your swan One more cycle of breathing. Lower your head, bend your knees, come all the way in. Sit all the way up. Add a second spring. I do want to do overhead stuff. Um, It's a really good way to stretch out our spine and and really see where we're at. If you're not going overhead, just do the roll up or you can already go into coordination. So you can also just press the arms down, lift the legs to from flat to being at the level of your hips. You can do some version of the overhead. Otherwise, legs long, squeeze them together. Right here, focus less on the flexion today and more on how much your upper back allows you to connect. So take the legs over, 
press your arms into the mat and then lift your legs up, 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 up. Get them over your hips and then roll the spine down. So it's not about what the legs are doing to get all the way up there. You have to be staying on your shoulder girdle. If you're standing on your neck, you're not gonna get much height, are you? Just one more. Press those arms down, wide collarbones. Big back stretch, lift, reach, and roll down. Bend your knees in, squeeze your heels tight. Lift your head and chest up and hold for just a second. So this is sort of a shape. If we flipped it over, you would be in this position as a star position. Your arms would be more like this uh, for your swan, right on the long box. So pull your muscles into this and feel what that's like. So when we flip it over and face gravity, we can connect to these muscles and then press your arms and legs to straight. Open the legs, squeeze them close. Keep the heels together as you bend the knees, bend the elbows. Today, focus on the upper arm bones trying to reach down into the carriage as you curl up so we can get as much arm back connection as possible because your swan is affected. It is strengthened by your arm back connection. It's not about having like an open front and a strong back and the spine muscles. It's got to come from those arms connected to your back that will lift you and lengthen you. Last one. Good. Okay, sit all the way up. As you spin around for your rowing, take a spring off. Remember, you can always do this with um, weights. So here we go, one, one or two pound weights is perfect. Squeeze those legs long. This is your chance to reach through your legs like you did your foot bar, okay? And then round back, hold it. Can you keep the carriage still as you open your arms? Now, can you keep your body still as you push your arms back? and then lift up and over your legs and hold, no collapsing. If you can hook your thumbs, great. If not, no big deal. Lift your arms up and right here, as you lift those arms up to the ceiling, you reach them wide. Feel the width of your upper back. Feel the stretch as you reach your arms forward, but they're connected to your back and then roll up. So here is your opportunity to practice moving those arms from your upper back. And how does that lengthen your spine, lengthen your waist, and stretch you more. One more time, round, open, push, reach, and lift, and circle around. Lift those arms up, elbows nice and high. Keep the elbows up as you lean back, reach, 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 reach. Do not pull those hands to your shoulders, it's not a bicep curl. Then serve a platter, reach those arms forward, forward, forward. Keep the pinky side of the hand into the handle until you have to flip your palms and then reach here and pause. Can you open your collarbones? Can you lift your waist off of your thighs a little bit more? And then circle the arms all the way around and then elbows up, lean, reach. And then press the hands and then lift the arms and circle and again. Elbows up, lean, lift, reach, and then press the hands, lift the arms, and circle all the way, big stretch, good. If you're new to your rowing, then sit against your shoulder box. If you're not, I want you to sit in, like just literally barely a finger's distance away, legs long and together, squeeze those outer hips in and really activate your legs. It'll make this exercise easier. Hook your thumbs and then reach your arms forward. So here we go, lower the arms. Remember those arms, they dictate what your back does. So as they lift up to the ceiling, can they pull, not your shoulders up, but your lower back up. And then if you don't have shoulder issues, then open your arms behind you, allow your chest to lift to the ceiling, little swan prep chest, circle the arms all the way down. And again, reach. If you've got shoulder stuff or neck stuff, don't do that. Lift your arms, lift your arms to lift your lower back. And then open the arms slightly behind you and allow that to pull your chest into a swan. And again, reach. If you wanna do this with weights instead of the spring, to practice this right here, the arms pick your upper back up to the ceiling and circle, flex your feet head towards your knees. I know it's tempting, but don't lift your hands until I say. So keep your hands along the carriage. Reach, 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 reach past your heels. Now lift your arms, and because your arms are connected to your back, it picks your back up. And then if you wanna circle the arms slightly behind you again, big stretch and also big strength. Reach forward.